In this interview, Creative Lives Kenna Klosterman and I discuss photography education, finding your niche, and her mindful adventure trips. We also chat about gear acquisition syndrome, also known as gas, and how to combat it. This is Twit. Hey folks, welcome back to This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today, take a seat because I have Kenna Klosterman on the hook here. She's a photographer and you may know her from Creative Live where she's a host and kind of runs the show over there in terms of what happens on screen. So we're going to talk to Kenna. We're going to dive into who she is as a photographer. And more importantly, I think she is what I kind of affectionately call people a multimediographer. She does a lot of stuff, you know, and it all kind of has one thread of photography that runs through everything. So Kenna, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Frederick. It is an honor to be on your show. Loved having you on the podcast that I host for Creative Live. We are photographers, and I love this concept of multimediographer. Yes, yes that is you. <laughs> that is you, the master of mini media. That's who you are. So let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's start there. Let's dive in. Um, I really want to talk about just sort of your. The, a lot of the things that you do, because you you're you know I was doing my research on you. You're are you are obviously the Creative Live host. You host a podcast for Creative Live called We Are Photographers. You run workshops when we could do that. You know we run workshops around the world. You are a photographer, obviously, and on and on and on. Lots of stuff. Like I said, has that common thread of photography running through it. Let's start with We Are We Are Photographers. I'm going to start there. So tell me about the podcast and what was the inception of the podcast and just where did it come from? Yeah, awesome. Um, so for those that aren't familiar with Creative Live, uh, we are a uh, educational site where we um, stream education and inspiration to uh, photographers, filmmakers all over the world, creatives and creative entrepreneurs. And so uh, we have a multitude of types of people that uh, watch Creative Live, uh, but I've always had my heart for photography because that's what I do. And so uh, we wanted to bring additional content and insights um, to our community, global community out there. So we started the podcast called We Are Photographers because it kind of wanted to be inclusive on the we, um, not just like here's a photographer and this is a photographer, um, but we're all photographers, whether that's professional, amateur, for the love of. Is, um, and, and so um, I believe that there is something to learn from everyone's story. And so this podcast is not about gear, uh, is not about reviews of things. Those are all great, but it really is about the human story of what connects us all as creatives. And, you know, everybody has a different story, but there's always themes and threads and we all have our ups and downs. And uh, so it's, it's making us all not feel alone in the creative struggle, I would say. I love that. I love that. Um, this Week in Photo is very much in that, you know, in that jet stream because it's, you know, we we don't we talk about gear every now and then, but and geek out like anyone else. But it's the the show is more about these kinds of conversations, connecting one on one with other people who just happen to share the love of photography with you. And it could be business, it could be technique or whatever. You know, it's there's so much in this world to talk about in the photography world to talk about, and everyone's experience is completely different. I want to can I want to dive into Creative Live a little bit. Um, I met Chase Jarvis way back in the day, uh, and I've had the opportunity to speak with him in person a couple of times. And I'm always, you know, always have that rock star kind of, you know, tr try not to say something stupid, Frederick. You know, it was, it's always, <laughs> it's always that. Um, and he started this company called Creative Live. And if when he started it, or when when it got started, it was, and I don't know if it's still that. You can correct me, uh, but the whole metaphor was watch for free. But if you want to watch the replays, then there's a, a small fee that you have to pay in order to get access to the replays. Is it still that model? Because it, it's been affectionately been kind of dubbed the creative live model in the industry. Is it still there? <laughs> yes, it absolutely is. And yeah, we, we started, um, I've been there from the very beginning, essentially. I started out as a volunteer back 
now coming up on 11 years ago, which is crazy. Mm. Uh, and um, so, yeah, so, so, so we are constantly bringing new classes to the platform. We have, I think, about 2,000 classes on the platform wow. now over, over 10 years' time. And so, yes, there's always something playing for free across five, the, across five different channels, photo and video, art and design, craft and maker, music, and then also our Money and Life channel, which has a lot of entrepreneurial courses um, and everything from yoga to meditation you know, to personal finance. Um, so so a lot more than just photography, uh, whether that's for your business, hobby, or life in general. And yeah. so people can uh, tune into something. There's always, again, something playing five days a week for free, um, rotating schedule. You can go and see what's playing. Our, one of our core values is access, giving people access to classes that and instructors they wouldn't be able to necessarily go and see in person. And then, yes, it's kind of a, for those ones, um, kind of a try before you buy. If you have a specific course that you want to be able to have lifetime access to, um, that you want to be able to pause, stop, rewind, uh, you can purchase that course. Um, and we also have what we call the Creator Pass, and that's our subscription. So just like a Netflix these days, you know, everybody wants a subscription. And so we've uh, created that model where you can um, pay one fee, and then you have access to nearly all the classes in the catalog while you have that subscription. So again, access to 2,000 classes um, yeah. in, in all of genres so so yes uh we still we still we've evolved um with the subscription but still there's always something to, to watch for free uh and then you can also um pay to own courses i love that i love that that you want to you want to hear a kind of an inside baseball little known yes. thing so a lot of people don't know many people don't know that i was uh the chairman of the board at a photography school called Brooks Institute in Santa yep. Barbara. You may have heard of them. So oh, yes. uh, I remember when, you know, Brooks Institute is now gone, right? It is now kind of faded away for many reasons. One of those reasons is Creative Live. <laughs> so on the battle board, the whiteboard inside, <laughs> when we're strategizing what to do next and how to evolve the school, um, one of, you know, there was basically three big names up on the board that we were like, okay, we got to do more of what they're doing, you know? And it was Linda creative live, I think was on the you know, creative live. Absolutely. Was on the list. And there was another one. I can't remember, but those were the, Could've those were the Kelby. Big. Oh, Kelby. Thank you. Kelby training. Yes. Yep. Those were the three of like, our lunch is getting eaten. How do we get our lunch back? Right. <laughs> so, so, well, it's a, it's a, it, I knew you had been at Brooks and of course I knew that Brooks, um, it is no longer with us, but, yeah. um, but it was an interesting time in that, yes, things were, we were sort of at the forefront of, of, um, doing live events, um, that was again, that connecting people with instructors that they couldn't go to in person at Brooks, um, say, I know Chris Orwig is one of our instructors and he was yeah. uh, there at Brooks. Uh, and, and yet um, there was a lot, I think there was a lot of fear around people getting on the platform and sort of like giving away their secrets, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but, but what happens is that when you reach more people, they actually then want to come and be with you in person. Uh, as well. So it's sort of like it's actually was kind of the reverse what would happen of people being like, oh, if I do an online class, then everyone will know everything. Uh, but but really, it's that's how you connect um, with an even grander audience. And of course, now, you know, we, you can live stream on your phone, um, yeah. And, yeah. you know, and so it's a very different, um, very different landscape today with regard to education um, as it, as it was back then. But, um, but now I, I can imagine the, the battle board, the battleground. <laughs> um, and you know, there's a, it's, it's, everything's always shifting as it is today. It you is. Know? It is. And if you don't shift with it, then, you know, you get left behind, obviously. Uh, you know, this is, this is such a, uh, an opportunity to chat with you because one of the things that's, that's near and dear to my heart about how things operate is just, education, distance learning. And now, as we've all seen over the past, you know, 18 months, year or so, live events and virtual and how 
it can be viable, you know, in terms of you know, in terms of a sub, you know, substitute or even a an, a, an add on to a, a live event, virtual and live together. I want to talk to you about that. Like from first off, how how have you seen things change in your personal world of how you do things like with the workshops and all that stuff? And also on the professional side with Creative Live in terms of how things have shifted under the pandemic and the lockdowns and all that. Have you seen things increase, I would expect, or have they kind of leveled, leveled out and decreased? Well, it, it, starting with the Creative Live, I mean, we, you know, we've, this is now my set, you know, and yeah. that's, that's your set. And, yep. you know, we're, we're able to utilize uh, the technology to be able to broadcast live streams from home um, to, you know, of course, we're not, um, be, being able to have an in-studio audience and do things, you know, because of the pandemic in, in the ways that we had previously, you know, at this time we're recording this right now, it's February, uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, you shift and you try to find new ways to create a space for people to engage online, a big part of the platform, whether it was live, um, when, it, when it was live was being people being able to chat, you know, in, in simultaneously. And so whether it is the um, the podcast, we are photographers, we started something called Creative Live TV. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll be coming up on a year since in April when the pandemic hit um, to again, um, we, we made a bunch of our classes that were um, for health and wellness, uh, more available, playing more often for free, and they, they still are. We know a lot of people, you know, are um, suffering with regard to just our, our health and wellness being yeah. um being needing to be a priority so wanting to put more content out there you know people started to be doing musicians were doing concerts from home so you know we were utilizing this platform that we had spent 10 years building to be able to bring um, those types of events uh, to people and again that connection with being able to you know chat with each other what have you on the course page or you know integrating that into social media as well streaming it you know, onto um, the multiple platforms while you're live. Uh, and so I think it's still, you know, the concept is still that creating space for people to come and be together, whether that's, you know, in the live context. So now if we're kicking off a new course, the course might be pre-recorded, uh, but we'll still have uh, the morning of the new class premiere when it's free to watch for the 24 hours. We'll still bring you the educator and it might, it's, likely me and the educator, you know, just <laughs> like this um, yeah. in our homes, but we're still that opportunity to, you know, to, to connect and feel like you are part of something. And I think that's the, the beauty of live it, for, for anyone, whether, you know, whether it's now clubhouse, you know, which I'm barely getting started Same here. On. Same here. <laughs> it's still like, oh my gosh, now even more. Uh, but just, there's an aspect of, live that leads to a feeling of being with people and belonging, even if it's virtual. And that's always been the thing with Creative Live. And so, you know, we want to continue to to create space for that, I would say. Um, yeah. And and so, yeah, just continuing to to evolve and th do things like Creative Live TV, continue to bring the, the live podcasts and other live guests. We did a cooking show um, that was called Work From Home Cafe with Andrew Scrivani, uh, where, you know, he was um, combining photography and food uh, and that was coming to you live. So, so, um, so, so doing a lot of, you know, that, that again, the education is there for the self-directed learning, uh, mm -hmm. but then there's also that community aspect. Um, and then switching over to my other guiding, um, yeah. uh, 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 roles. I mean, we, I had to, uh, postpone, you know, the tours and trips. I was going to lead a tour, uh, with John Gringo, who's a photographer and educator. Um, we we're going to go back to Africa for to Kenya to, for another safari. So I had to postpone that. Um, and I also lead, um, Mindfulness adventures, we call them, mm. uh, with um, my best friend Susan Roderick. So uh, they started as retreats um, of the mind, heart, body, and soul, and now we've kind of uh, reframed as mindful adventures because we like to go to places like Nepal and Costa Rica and you know Italy and Bali. So the Bali one uh, got rescheduled, but we we think we're 
we got rescheduled to November, but crossing fingers, we'll be vaccinated and, you know, I'll be able to, to go um, at the end of this coming year. So, but you just adjust, you um, find more work in other places. You, uh, you know, we've all had to, to adjust really. Yeah. Adapt, adapt, evolve and, and overcome. Right. That's the, that's the thing beginning, especially yeah. these days. I, I, I really love the idea of the mindfulness adventures of a friend of mine, Ralph Velasco is a, I did, a, I, I did a tour with him in Vietnam once. And he, you know, as we were t- talking about the tour and strategizing on how it was going to go, one of his guiding principles was he didn't want to make it all about photographer or photography. It's more about the adventure of being in these, these amazing cities in Vietnam and eating the food, but then also capturing awesome shots and understanding how to do, you know, leveled up tourist shots. But it wasn't all about photography. Like, let's hurry up and leave this great cafe to catch the light. It was more of let's let's be more serendipitous about it. So (laughs) it's a balance. It is a balance, Frederick. I've led um, tours to to Cuba um, for several years now. That was kind of one of the places I fell in love with. And so continue to go back. I think I've been about 12 times to 13 times. Um, And 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 so was doing the photo tours um, again in the beginning, along with John Gringo. And then there are certain places where. And me personally, I mean, photography for me can, this is for a number of people, but photography for me can be a tool. And then I know, you know, you talk about this. It, it, it can be a, a reason for being in a place, a reason for an activity, a reason for connecting with people. And so you can get caught up in, in must be in the right place at the right time for the right light. <laughs> but to your point, then you might miss certain interactions and, and events and things um, that al- along the way. So I started shifting um, to like a food and culture tour where everybody that was coming was still mainly into photography because, you mm-hmm. know, that's how they know me and, and you know, what have you. But um, there's just it's kind of it, it's a it's a mindset shift. And so you kind of have to be clear with what you are putting out there. I don't call it a workshop when I'm doing these travel uh, um, and tours, because a workshop to me, um, sure, you're going to learn when you're we're traveling with a group of photographers and we set up things, you know, focus on this today or what have you. Mm-hmm. But like you don't for me and we do reviews and things like that, but it, it's, um, it's more than that. And, and yeah. it's the, it really is the experience, the food, the, you know, all of these things. And, but you get to be with a group of photographers where, you know, if you're on a trip with non-photographers, then that's hard too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you're wanting right. to be out there photographing everywhere. So. Yeah. Like why is she still um, over there with her tripod? She's right, been over there for right. like 30 minutes. She's still there. We get the picture already. Right. <laughs> right. But the mindfulness part, um, I mean, for, for, you know, for, for me personally, um, and, and a lot of creatives, you know, you, um, you know, there's a lot of just like life struggle or yeah. like you're constantly learning about yourself. And, and so the more that you focus on, on what you're learning for yourself, you know, you kind of want to integrate that into what you're teaching or what you're doing or who you're holding space for. And so, uh, for me personally, uh, meditation and mindfulness, um, have been a, a huge part of my, um, health and wellness. And so, again, creating space. I like to call myself a guide as the through line for all these things, because I really, you know, got to a point where I I saw the through line, whether it's in the classroom at Creative Live for the home audience, for the instructor, for the in-studio audience, or it's leading a tour or a mindfulness retreat. It really is holding space for people and, and being a guide. And so, um, so, you know, really integrating more of these, uh, or I will <laughs> continue to once we can travel <laughs> again. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, mindful adventures though, because I also love to travel to far off distant places. And so, and that makes you uncomfortable, you know, it get, puts you in an uncomfortable place already. And so that's how then you layer on sort of these, um, levels of, of mindfulness and, and meditation practices. And, and it kind of, you, you come back, you know, with, with a new outlook on, on life and, yourself is really love the important that. part. It's like a, a, it sounds like a control alt delete, 
you know, on just <laughs> kind of, you know, resetting, resetting Rebate. everything. Yeah. 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 It's so interesting. You mentioned, you know, how you talk about looking at it from a mind, mindfulness adventure, photo tour, you know, type type perspective, because, you know, the, the photography industry is vast and, you know, it's. I don't know if it still is, but for a long time running, it was the photography has been the fastest, fastest growing hobby out there for people. So people love to do it. And we as we talked about during our our interview on your podcast, these these amateurs are every bit as good as professionals. Right. And they do it for the love of. But from that standpoint, you look at that bedrock of the photography industry. I think it's brilliant to start just on top of that saying you're a photographer. Yeah, it's a given. Let's look at this from a, from a mindfulness perspective, or let's look at this from a foodie perspective, or let's look at this from a whatever perspective. Yes, photography's there. We're all bringing our great cameras and SD cards, but we're also going to eat some cool stuff, or you're going to learn how to center yourself and be more relaxed and take on the world. So I love that. That's cool. How did you, is that just the way that you are as a person, just kind of you know, mindful, or did you come up with that after the fact? <laughs> well, I, I, and I do want to just to clarify, um, we started out with, it was the photographers coming on the, on these, um, on the retreats, but now it's kind of shifted to, um, that, that is, is its own separate thing from, and not necessarily everyone that's coming as is photographers anymore on the mm. the mindful adventures. Um, but I still do the, the photo tours too, but I think I feel like I I'm bringing in the mindfulness, whether people know it or not on the, <laughs> on the photo tours. Uh, I, I think, no, I think it's just, it's been a, 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 um, a practice for me for quite some time now. And so once again, once you, um, you're learning something and you're practicing something and you're seeing how it affects you and your the growth in your own life. That's when you kind of, you, you, when you get enough ahas on something, it's kind of like, you want to tell the whole world, you like, yeah. your life could be better too, if, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so, uh, so yeah, so through, um, practice and, and, and again, a meditation practice, which is there's lots of different uh, ways and avenues, but um, that I found that helped with my anxiety and stress levels and actual um, physical pain, learning more about the brain and how, um, how that works and how calming your nervous system, you know, just can impact um, so many different things in your life. And so, um, a lot of people know of that. They don't think that they can do it. Um, there's a lot of like, I've tried to meditate and I can't do it. Uh, and, yeah. and that's not that that's uh, that it, it it's a constant practice for life. So there is no like you can or you can't. Um, everybody yeah. breathe. Like, everybody I breathe. Tried to, I tried painting once and I can't do it. So I'm giving up. Right. Right. <laughs> Right, right. Which going back to lifelong learning, mm -hmm. you know, I find a lot of people, including myself, can give up really quickly if you think that you're supposed to be perfect at something right away, you know? Yeah. So whether it's, I mean, photography, lifelong journey, you can't know it all at once. There's, but the more that you do something like then other things start to fall into place and make sense. Uh, and so I, I just, I find it, um, I find like two things you can listen all you want, so a lot of people like say I'm at a conference and someone will come up to me and say, creative live changed my life. And I'll say, that's awesome. But actually you changed your life. Yeah. And, and so there's the, there's the taking in information, but it's the doing and the practice, the putting in that, the time, like that's where the actual real learning comes. And so I just, I always like to remind people that, you know, if you are growing at some, in something like, yes, the information was put out there in front of you, but not everybody takes it and does something with it. Uh, yeah. And so, and, and again, then going back to like the reason why you've got to revisit classes and courses and, you know, all the things is that you will learn different things at different moments based on your experience at that time.
That is so true. That is so true. Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of a book called, uh, what's it called? Cycle Cybernetics. It's a, oh. I listen to, I listen to it on my walks and there, there, the, the author is right. It's read by the, by the author. Um, he's now talking about basically what you're talking about, right? About how powerful the mind is and, you know, you can train it, you know, a lot of it's a pre visualization stuff where you can train your mind to, to think in certain ways or to perceive your own self in a certain way so that eventually you start acting in that way. And then it's a, you know, it's, it's like you put it out there and it comes back at you kind of thing. And, you know, I look at that stuff and I think, you know, based on what you just said, we we're talking about, uh, just learning and learning how to, you know, over time, how you can learn a new thing. A lot of people, I think myself included discount that part of it, right? The yep. learning, the learning part of it. it, new people. I've seen this, I've been in the photography game since the eighties, right? So I've seen this over and over again with people that are new to the, to photography, they come in with the, with the bright eyed enthusiasm and, you know, maybe someone told them they were, they were good photographers and they should pursue this. So now they're, you know, maybe I am a good photographer and they start pursuing it. The next step, I one of the next steps is usually looking at someone they admire and feeling that they should instantly be like that, like a Joe McNally. Like, OK, I'm a new photographer. I want to be like Joe McNally. I'm going to go buy Nikon cameras and a bunch of lenses and some speed lights and I'm going to dress like Joe. And now I'm Joe. Wait a minute. My shots look nothing like Joe's. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? What do you tell those people, like from you putting on your education hat, like yeah. the people that have unrealistic expectations of of just getting good in photography? How do how do you combat that that sentiment? Well, so so for me, Frederick, and what comes to mind is 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 sharing. This is why I believe sharing everyone's stories is so important, so that you you don't just look at that like you know, it, it is often people say it's a 10 year overnight success, you know, mm -hmm. like you, you, and you can't just look at what, who Joe McNally is now, um, versus everything that it took him to get there. Um, but I was, I was the host of, uh, or the MC for a conference called, uh, the baby summit that was mm. in Australia with Kelly Brown and a bunch of, um, newborn, um, photographers and baby photographers. And I, I wanted to, I, I started out the event by sort of telling the story of when I quit being a newborn photographer and, and it was, I was photographing, this was very early in my, um, do I want to be a wedding photographer? Do I want to be a portrait photographer? Kids, you know, what do I want to do? As a lot of us start out in when we decide that this is something we want to pursue professionally. And so I had photographed um, a woman who was uh, it, for her maternity photos, which were gorgeous and stunning. And I was confident in and all of that. And, and then she asked me to photograph her newborn babies. She was having twins. And I, you know, it's one of those where you're like, sure, I can do that. And I it was twins. <laughs> oh, and I geez. was not, and, and I was not, I didn't have the tools. I was yeah. not, I, I was not, and especially with newborns, there's safety and all of that. Uh, but then there's just, I wasn't even, I'm not a mother, you know, I'm an aunt, but you know, there's just all these layers. And I went in and I just, I walked out of there, like I failed. Yeah. And then I was like, that's it. This isn't for me. I'm done. I wasn't, I didn't say to myself, well, geez, Kenna, why would you expect yourself to know how to do all of that and be brilliant at it? Like you wouldn't go and out with a surfboard into the surf and think that you were going to get up and like ride hundred foot waves right away. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's this, um, I don't, and, and so what I was saying to all the people who were the hundreds of, of people that were there at the conference was like, you're here to learn, like you are taking those steps, like remember that um, it's a, you know, it's a, a wasted opportunity if you don't get something right the first time to, um, to just 
like walk away. Uh, yeah. But you know, that's we can go into the psychology of that. I have the perfectionist, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, thing going on, which could be very detrimental. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, it's you know, a lot of times you know, we say there, you know, there are no failures, there's only learnings. Um, and I, you know, I, you, you have to just look at everything, going back to meditation, like looking at everything as a practice. Um, yeah. 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 It's like, it, it reminds me of that back to that book, Cycle Cybernetics. It was there, he likened what you're talking about, you know, the kind of learning flow and, and, not beating yourself up if you don't hit it, you know, at the first time is kind of like trying to find a pin on a table in a dark room or with your eyes closed. How do you do it? Right. You start feeling around and trying, right. trying different locations, and then you kind of find out where it's not. And then you narrow it down to where it is and then you grab it. And now, you know, it's a pin. You got it. You don't, you might accidentally grab it when we had people, <laughs> People like that in the world, too, that just accidentally suddenly luck into fame and fortune. But for the rest of us, we got to pat the table and kind of go around the edges. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. We could talk about this forever. You know, I want to I want to switch gears and talk about genre and all these are education kind of related questions. So genre from the standpoint of, again, I'm a new photographer. I'm just into this. How do I find out what my genre is? You know, I know people have said I take great portraits. Me, is that my genre? I see landscapes over there. Those look beautiful. I'd love to do that. Maybe that's my genre. I love babies. I should shoot babies. That's my genre. What about weddings? Right? How do you figure it out? How do you get to the point where you're like, this is the thing that I'm going to focus on and be known for and be the best on the planet at? How do you get to that level? <laughs> I mean, that's the million dollar question, Frederick. I mean, it, <laughs> yes. it's, it, it, I think it's just what you talked about is the, is finding the pen. You can't know if you are going to be drawn to something until you try it. And so, so, you know, do I want to be, did I realize in the end that I wanted to be a newborn photographer? I don't think I did. Um, but I didn't give myself the opportunity after, you know, that after that experience. Um, and, and so it, I, I think that, you know, it's a, it's just, it depends. Also, it depends on if you're trying to do something professionally or just, you know, just for, for the love of, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, you know, I, it, there's so many aspects to what are you drawn to, you know, where, uh, what is, what do you want to do? I, I think it always goes back to if you, well, if you want to be in the world of photography as a professional, um, where meaning like it's where your income is coming from, if, if that's the meaning of professional in that way, um, yeah. then uh, first of all, there's the, the reminder that it's 90% business and 10% photography. So then it's like, staying true to yourself, who you are, what you want to do, and making sure that there are matching that to clients who can, you know, see that value at the same level of what you're looking to find. Um, and so in terms of clients. So, I mean, I think we've, if you look out there, all of those things are possibilities. Um, and, and I think you just have to, to try and, and, and be okay with course correcting. And so yeah. that's, that, that's the bit again, that, um, you, it is totally okay. If you need to pivot and go a direction and a different direction, finding that something is not to your liking. Cause if, and a, a lot of people will say like, if you really wanted to be doing something, you would actually be making that a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, it, it really is asking yourself, what do you want to spend your time doing? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's like a market out, there's a market out there for all of it. Yeah. But yeah. that's hard work too. <laughs> it's, 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 I was going to say, it's almost like dating, right? You gotta, you gotta date before you can figure out who you're going to marry. Right. You gotta date, you gotta date a bunch of genres and then pick one that is your genre that, you know, that's the kind of, you know. Yeah, I don't want to take that analogy any further than that, but that's, <laughs> that's my genre. I would say that's my genre. And you 
can uh, have, I mean, the, the conversation go can go on at length about can you have multiple genres? Can you present yeah. yourself? You know, if you're, can I be a wedding photographer at the same time as a family photographer? And there's, you know, yes, there's there's a lot uh, of of um, ways to think about it out there, and and then that comes down to the business side of how you are presenting yourself to the world. And, um, you know, that's, that's often one of the most common questions that when we would be doing um, photo classes that had to do with business was like, well, can I have one website where I'm advertising both, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I mean, generally the, the sentiment from different educators were like, put out there in the world what you want to get paid to do. If you don't want, you know, even if you have clients that are X, Y, Z, but that's not where you want to specialize, then it's okay to do that work. Just don't present it as the main thing you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's tough for a lot of people because they're like, well, but I'm, I'm leaving money on the table. I want to do portraits and I want to do this, but I also get paid for real estate. Do I not put real estate on there? But you know, so that, that is, that is one of the big questions, right? Do you, do you hyper specialize or do you jack of all trades or jack of many trades type and it sounds like you know based on what your learnings are it is put forward what you want to get paid for and that's that's what you focus on yeah so much to talk about so much to talk about um education as 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 it applies to gear this is an ongoing conversation right in in our industry with gear acquisition syndrome and and the latest the greatest gas. camera the old <laughs> gas and we all have it right sony drops this new amazing camera now everybody wants it you don't really need it because you know uh but you want it and you gotta have it and you can justify getting it because you have gas right how do you when you instruct people either either you know online or in your physical workshops or, you know, mindfulness adventures, how, how do you approach that? You know, when people come to you and say, Hey, we're going to Costa Rica and I'm going to bring four camera bodies and seven lenses and a drone and a 360 camera. What am I missing? What else should I bring? Kenna? What do you tell them? <laughs> That's so funny. Um, <laughs> First, you got to find out what's the weight limit on, <laughs> on the plane that you're flying on. Um, yeah. and, and no, I mean, it's often what you find is even if you come with all of those different things, then you often, including myself, like may never pull out a couple of those lenses, you know, <laughs> or yeah, yeah. you might find that you don't have the opportunity to fly a drone in that particular destination. Um, and, and I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it, it depends on who you are, what you value. Are you there? You know, for me again, like a lot of it is having the experience and utilizing photography as an experience even more so necessarily than what I might do with the final print. Mm -hmm. Other people, they might have their eyes on the final print and what they're going to do with, you know, whether that's digital or actual physical print. And so there's, I think it's really is about what are you looking at your intention and what are you hoping to come away with um, from that photography experience. And again, this is different than um, if you're doing it, you know, for your business and, and for, uh, for other reasons where um, you need super high resolution or, you know, depending on what you're doing. Um, yeah. So, I mean, even if you are having the option of having you know, wide angle to telephoto, you know, again, depends if you're going to on a safari, um, you're definitely going to want some options, um, with regard to certain, uh, types of, of focal distances and, and, um, you know, and just for that purpose. But if, yeah. you know, if I'm just walking around the street doing street photography and portrait street portraits and things like that is, which is what I love to do. Um, then, you know, I want to keep it somewhat minimal and and part of again it is it for me it's it's the experience that uh is i have learned that that is my priority and that's not the case for everybody i mean i yeah. might embarrassingly like 
not process images from a trip for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, because again, and years that's okay. even sometimes. <laughs> and that's okay. And I learned, I had to learn that that was okay. Um, because again, my intention was not necessarily to be selling certain prints, you know, or whatever. It, mm -hmm. it just, um, I think you have to, we get caught up in wanting to, in like you said earlier on, like looking at what other people do, you know, some people are like super into post-processing their images and they love the Photoshop process and they love the Lightroom process and they love doing that part of it. And I thought I was supposed to love that part of it, but I don't really. Mm. And me, like, even verbalizing that is like, oh, did I just say that on this week in photo? <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. And I'm not editing it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how, but that's okay. And I've had those conversations with other photographers on trips. I mean, like, it's okay if that's not the part that you love. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of freeing. It is. You know, <sighs> Yeah, you know, this is this is such a deep conversation because one of one of the aspects of like the whole gear acquisition syndrome thing is if you overlay it on travel, right? And I remember a couple of years ago, several years ago, I went on this workshop with Valerie Jardin in Paris. Yes. Yeah, yes. We went to, it was in Paris, my first time properly in Paris. I had gone through the airport, but never, you know, sat down and and had bread, you know, on the street. So I did that. But the preparation for that trip was mind wracking because I'm like, OK, I don't know when I'm getting back to Paris again. Yep. I got to bring everything right. I'm going to get over there and be wishing for my whatever insert lens here or insert piece. Of so I ended up bringing a bunch of stuff, a lot of weight that then I had to worry about being back in the hotel. Ended up using, like you said, I think one, maybe two lenses the entire trip. But Me? I could have got by with <laughs> one lens the entire thing. And I began to resent the, the other gear because I'm like, look at you. All this weight that I brought along and in, in danger of losing you for nothing, you know, <laughs> So, so how do you combat that, though? You know, if, if I'm on a trip with Kenna Klosterman to Kenya, if I'm going to Kenya, I'm like, I mean, I get back here again. I got to document this and I'm going to be sad if I need that really long lens because there's a lion over there or something. What, what yeah. do you do? Yeah, well, exactly. And, and so whatever the trip is, I mean, we certainly are giving people guidance upon um, what types of lenses are most appropriate for that trip. Like you said, going to Paris and doing, you know, what Valerie does, a lot of that street photography and just wanting mm -hmm. that, you know, 35 or 50, it, 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 that's a different, very different thing. And so it is really, again, knowing what you are going to be getting into and therefore, you know, when we're when when John Gringo and I are, you know, are doing a, a tour, whether that's again, Cuba, Kenya, we like to that morning be like, OK, here's what we're going to do today. Here are the recommended lenses, you know, for this scenario. Yeah. And so um, so certainly I, and the other bit is like finding out, you know, who else is on the trip. You might want to share lenses, mm. um, you know, that type of be, be, being flexible to that. Uh, but it, it, the types of trips that I love to do where it is a lot of, you know, walking around in the streets and observing and meeting and cultures and all of that. Um, yeah. Have lugging around the beautiful 70 to 200 2.8. Like it can, it's a beautiful lens. Uh, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it really, uh, it, I personally, again, um, for me, and we can say this a lot, it's not about the gear, you know, yeah. it, it, yeah. it, you can create, you know, beautiful images with your mobile device. Um, and, and it just goes down to what, do you want your photography experience to be? If you want it to be having all of those lenses with all the options, great. Just be prepared to, you know, to carry all that around. Um, yeah. and especially in strange so, places, right? Because you're, you got $20,000 worth of gear on you 
you know, walking around a strange place, which instantly makes you a target, you know, for a lot of people, you know, and you got this backpack and all the weight and then you want to go hang out and have, you know, a glass of wine at the end of the day. But you got this big old backpack with you. You got to lug that in there, you know. So I remember the trip to, to, to Paris um, for Valerie's workshop. She just used her Fuji X100S yep. with the fixed lens on that. That was her yep. camera for the whole time, you know, and everyone else was like, you know, myself included, I had a bunch of lenses and all this other stuff. But Valerie had her one camera and outshot everybody, you know, <laughs> so, so there's a lesson in there, right? Well, right. And again, that's because her photography, you know, again, you're you're using your feet to move around yeah. and yeah. you're on the street and you're, you know, or whatever it is. Um, but I, I really do believe it comes down to, you know, what what do you want to create? Yeah, no, absolutely. All right. So let, let's wrap this up. I have a, 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 just a couple of directions to wrap this up in. There's the, the direction of Creative Live. You know, what's next for Creative Live? And, you know, any secrets you can spill on This Week in Photo. Uh, then what's next for Kenna Klosterman? You know, when to, you know, obviously pandemic notwithstanding for the travel stuff. But what's what's next on your agenda? Yeah, so I mean, Creative Live, we're you know continuing to um, bring on more classes, uh, provide that for whether it's our subscribers or you know really constantly looking for um, new educators, new topics. We love hearing what people want to learn. Like I said, we've got now um, two thousand classes in the catalog and growing. Um, people can go to creativelive.com/tv. Like I said, to check out some of that additional um, content that is, um, again, a place to come and be, think about creativity, get um, tips across the board, uh, and then um, and then just be, you know, part of the, the community when we are there chit-chatting away. Um, yeah. So, uh, again, you know, lots to come. We're bringing, continue to bring new classes on even during the pandemic in, in different ways with connecting and partnering with different educators. A lot of people now have, you know, the tools to, to be able to film things in different ways than we did 10 years ago. Um, so... Um, yeah, so it's an exciting time. I'm actually uh, working a lot more with educators right now. Uh, so, so that's a lot of fun bringing on, again, bringing on new educators uh, and, and picking out what classes to bring on. Um, so, so yeah, a, a lot of good stuff continues at Creative Live. Uh, and then kind of personally, I mean, Got the Bali trip coming up in in uh, at the end of the year, and um, we're just I'm going to be using this time right now to again prepare for when things open up again. Yeah. Um, a time to sit back and look at what is it that I want to create, um, yeah. and how do I want to spend my time. And because, you know, what do I want to make a difference with in the world and help people do? And so it's it's um, yeah, it's a variety of of all of those things. And then learning new tools, social media tools as they come <laughs> They come oh along. <laughs> yeah, well, that's funny. The, the, the last thing on my que on my list of questions to talk to you about is Clubhouse and that the the rapid expansion that that is you and I. I'm going to put you on the spot. You and I have to do a clubhouse conversation Ooh. on mind, mindfulness in photography or being, I'm in. you know, kind of everything we talked about. I want to talk, talk about that at length and just kind of drill down on that. So I'm going to invite you to a room and we're going to do okay. it. So, okay. Okay. We're going to cool. do it. And that'll be my, I've only like sat in and listened to what you feel like you're like, oh, secretly like <laughs> listening to people. <laughs> so lurker. I, lurker. <laughs> yeah, I, a lurker. Yeah. Uh, I, I have not fully embraced. So again, I'm letting go of feeling the need to be perfect at knowing what I'm supposed yeah. to do with Clubhouse and just got to start finding that pen on the table <laughs> um, yeah. with my eyes closed. And uh, I, Girl, I love that. It is hard. That. I tell you, I've only been on Clubhouse. I only, I've only participated a couple of times on there. And 
I think it's easier. I, I think you and I are cursed with the with the the weight of perfection or at least striving for perfection. You know, because when I first learned of Clubhouse, I was like, oh, cool. So I could run that on my iPad and I could plug a nice USB-C mic into my iPad and get good audio. Oh, I can plug headphones into that too. Overkill. Overkill, right. complete overkill. Everyone on there is doing, you know, either on their phone or, you know, with AirPods and having these riveting, amazing conversations with no overhead. So it just, for me, with all the stuff that's around me, you know, to put on a show like this, it just evaporates and it goes away and you can go sit in the park or on your, on your daily walk, you know, just right. listen or participate. So, so yeah. we'll do that. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll okay. release the perfection demon and embrace you know, serendipity and imperfection. <laughs> Do thing. Yes. And so, play and play and just play. Trying to, and just yeah. Play. Trying to use that, that word more, you know, we think a lot about work, 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 but if we can learning to from other people to shift that to, to this idea of play and it makes yes. it a little bit different. Yes. Um, so let's, let's end this with just where, where should people go? Obviously creative live.com. Um, and then what was the other, the, for creative live TV and the podcast? What are those? Yes. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Thank you. So yep. Creative live.com. You can always see, um, what's playing by looking on, on air, uh, creative live.com slash TV is where, um, they're playing a lot more of this, just always free, um, a lot of conversational, but also different kinds of inspirational. Um, we've got Chase Jarvis Live podcast playing on there, the We Are Photographers podcast, additional uh, types of guests. The podcast, you can go to uh, creativelight.com slash podcast to listen to all the audio episodes of We Are Photographers. And then, of course, anywhere that you subscribe, uh, listen, get your podcasts, uh, you can um, subscribe, rate, review, we are photographers. And I also, of course, I'm on social media, um, Kenna Klosterman on Instagram, on Twitter is Kenna K Photo, and my website is Kenna K Photo as well, which is where you can find out about upcoming tours and retreats and all of those types of mindful adventures and photo adventures. Okay. That is, you know, it's interesting, even it's so fascinating talking to you because even the, the hierarchy of of your personal contact points was was very telling because you started started with Instagram at the end. Yeah, the website is for the well, was it? <laughs> it used to be the reverse is all I'm saying. It used to be. Right. You know. Oh, my gosh. So, right. Yeah. Yep. I've seen it. I've seen I've been around the sun a few times. I've seen changes. I've seen <laughs> changes. All right, Kenna, I'm going to hold you to it. You and I are going to do a chat on Clubhouse at some point in the next couple of days if you're up for it. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll come back on TWIP as well. And I want to dive into some of these areas that we talked about, like especially the mindfulness and just sort of the the meditation side of things and how creatives, not just photographers, but how creatives can you know, leverage that to become better creatives and more at ease and healthier and all that stuff. I think that's, yeah. that's really important, especially these days, you know, as we record this February 9th, 2021, you yeah. know, you future people know what's happening right now. So yep, <laughs> that's so, right. So. Moment in time for sure. Well, thank you so much, Frederick. It's my pleasure to um, thank you for asking me to be on your show and everybody can go check out Frederick's episode on We Are Photographers as well, where we yeah. dive into the, the life of the man himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I also talk as well. So. <laughs> exactly. We're cool. All right, Kenna. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on. We will we will talk again. All right. Thank you, Frederick. This is Twitter.